not as cold as Portugal, but it's still cold. These will be the last Nori sheets I ever buy from the store. Good morning everybody. I just want to give you a sneak peek at how much Nicole and I have done so far on preparing our home. We got this uh, logging road cleared. Look at that, we can walk up it. And Nicole's up there working like a beast still. And we're learning a lot about the native plants of the area. Whether it's a salal berry, whether it's a salmon berry, whether it's skunk weed, and of course all the different fungus, fungi, and mushrooms that grow and fruit all throughout the year here, whether it's a morel or a chanterelle or a chicken of the forest or a turkey tail or a conch. There's so much to eat here. Part of the reason why we're living in this area is because of the biodiversity and the beauty of it. So we don't want to hurt nature. We want to enhance nature and live at one with nature. So we're not decimating all the salmonberry bushes, just the ones that are going to be on the road that lead up to the yurt and the ones in the area, the 30 foot diameter circle that will be the yurt. All of these ones back here, we're leaving to see what kind of harvest we can get off of them. And this will be where the two front doors, the front doors of the Pacific yurt will face down this row of amazing conifers, hemlock and whatnot. And the entire road is just full of salmonberry bushes and also alders. So we're gonna clear a certain amount. We would love to have fruit trees line the driveway coming up. This road here goes out of our property to the main road and so does this road. So one will be the back way, one will be the front way. And we're gonna have the front way here lined with fruit trees. We have the pure block being sent out, about 30 pure blocks, it's not too many, but it'll house the platform of the yurt. And there are a few trees that kind of 
give us pause, okay? If you guys can see behind me right here, there are three sister trees that have fallen down. And this is kind of par for the course everywhere in this forest. Trees have fallen down, not by snapping in half, but rather they just are uprooted because the soil is so fertile that it's like hummus everywhere you go and the wind will just blow them over. And so everyone we've talked to has talked to us about how trees fall in this forest all the time. So we're concerned that possibly sometime down the road, we might have a tree fall on us. Now I don't think that's gonna happen because in this area, we are heavily forested. Look at the forest we are in the middle of. And because of that, the trees are protecting each other from the wind. So there are not fallen trees everywhere. We don't see any sign of a lot of fallen trees, just those three sisters. So quite possibly, I'm gonna have to bring the chainsaw out and cut down a few of these trees. And of course, then cure the wood underneath the carport, keeping it dry. And when it's ready, use the lumber for raised bed gardening and for other projects we have. And I'm getting the look from Nicole right now, so I gotta put the camera down and help her out. We're gonna break here in about an hour and we're gonna do something exciting today, grow our first garden. So why don't you guys come along for the ride and see how we're going to become members of the local gardening club. And we're gonna rent out two raised beds at the old school that has a beautiful community garden. We're gonna grow a lot of our fruit, veg, and herbs in two raised beds over there at the uh, community garden. Come on, let's go check it out. All right, before Nicole and I head down to our two raised beds, first of all, there's two raised beds and there's two of us. We're gonna have a little competition that you guys can vote on in the comments as to whose garden wins once they start to fruit, Nicole's or Jake's. Are you team Jake or are you team Nicole? Tell us in the comments. The raised beds are already put together. They've had them growing things before, but for now the soil level is really low. We gotta add some soil to it. We gotta add some nutritious living soil components to our garden beds. They have a compost pile on site at the community garden. We also gotta get some worm castings going on and we're gonna stomp into the forest right now together as a couple. <laughs> and we're gonna go find some really fertile black hummus. Put them in, these Put them in those buckets. We got three buckets here and we're gonna bring just a couple buckets per bed for the time being to inoculate the soil, get it living and uh, just tend it, just amend it, build it. Hey, do you feel that our forest is a nice safe place to be at night no. back here? No way in hell. It kind of scares you a little bit? Uh, a little bit, yeah. It's beautiful right now. The sun is glistening through all the leaves. And... Yes, it is. Yeah. Did we find a spot? I think right here where I'm standing. Can I steal your soil? Sure. This is what's under the ground everywhere over the entire eight acres here. Beautiful. And as we're digging, not just here in the forest, but also on the road, we're finding earthworms and so much life. Millipedes, centipedes. Here you guys go. I'll show you what this part over here looks like. This soil is even blacker and more fine. It just smells like straight up earth. Pretty amazing, check it out, close up. I'm holding a wood chip that was out here and if I just kind of grind it in my fingers, it just breaks down into red soil. That's why wood chips are so important. At first, they can suck all the nitrogen out of your soil, but once they start to break down, they become the most nutritious soil you can ever plant with, and it's veganic. So really enjoying seeing how Mother Nature gardens, and she is my best teacher. Kind of created an open wound on the earth, so I wanna put some ground cover there and give her back that top layer so that more soil can form here. All right, these are our two raised beds. Yes. Competition begins. <laughs> and 
both of us win. <laughs> so yeah. it's a good composition. You guys can see the ocean behind us over there, right on the coast. And there's raspberry bushes that border the whole garden. There's, there's gooseberry bushes and currants, and there's a collection of about 10 fruit trees. On the eastern side here, sun rises over here and moves across the sky, that's the south, and sets over there. They've got the raised beds covered in these um, black garbage bags to prevent weeds in the off season. So we're gonna take those off and throw down our first couple buckets of soil. And so we're not gonna be able to plant the whole bed today, but we're gonna just little by little prep it. And maybe you guys are the same as us. You just kind of pick and pick away at little projects and then all of a sudden one day they're done. People have planted in here before and I'm finding already a couple red Russian kale plants and some blackberries and strawberry plants that are left over from last season. So I'm going to take all these weeds out of here and uh, throw our buckets of really nice high quality forest hummus down. But I'm going to leave the, the kale, the blackberry and the strawberries and see what happens. You got lots of strawberries in yours. Yeah, I do. She's already winning. I just found my friend, Mr. Bumblebee. Just found a bunch of bulbs, which look like garlic chives from a previous season. They got that onion, garlicky, sweet taste to them. So I broke them apart, divided them out, and I'm gonna plant them as their own plants. And I'm not gonna put them right on the edge, because I'm gonna put edible flowers on the edge. I'm gonna put them one row in. That way they won't block the sun from anything else. And see if they grow into a more mature plant that we can harvest for a spice later. They got this cool compost pile here, so I'm gonna flip it a bit and see if we can get just one bucket per bed of good compost out of the bottom of this and then take all of our clippings and put it back in here and take a little and add a little and flip a little. Some good compost in there. It's looking really good. Okay. So you get so much rain here. For those of you who are building your own raised beds, the way that these ones were built, every raised bed can be different, where with just like a two by eight piece of wood, the long plank of wood, like a two by eight, and then they just have a piece of rebar. So this right here is a little clip that they've screwed into the wood and then the rebar goes straight down and that's it. 
And that's how the wood is holding itself up. So with rebar and a clip. Okay, Nicole loves to play games, and tonight we're playing 20 questions. We thought we would do one on camera. So play along with us, and don't skip ahead, and see if you guys can get it before I get it. So she's thinking, I'm guessing. Is it a good one, or is it like a technical one? That's... No, it's, good. it's a good one. Okay. Is it alive? No. Is it smaller than me? Yes. Was it ever alive? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You're keeping track of the Yeah, you got three. Have we seen it today? No. Have we together seen this thing? Yes. Have we seen this thing a lot? Um, yes. <laughs> and it's not alive. Is it man-made or woman-made? Yes. <clears throat> Is it technology? No. Mm. You're on eight. Do we have it with us at Blackfish? Yes. But we haven't used it or seen it today? Yes. We have. We haven't, no. Or we have not. Yes. How many questions is that? Nine. <laughs> Will we be using it this week at all? Probably. And it's smaller than me? Yes. Is it a tool? No. It's not a tool? No. And it's not alive. Do we eat it? Yes. What was that? We eat it? Yes. And it's not alive? Did we purchase it from the store? Um, and yeah. Is it in the van right now? Um, yeah. Oh, so it's food? Yes. Is it in a bag? I'm on 14. 15 now. Oh. Is it delicious? Yes. Is it bread? No. How many is that? You're at 17. Oh. Is it breakfast food? No. Is it lunch food? No. You're on 19. Yeah, I guess. Oh. Wait, don't I get 20 questions then I guess? No, I think on the 20th question. Is oh, it... whatever. You get one more. Is it chocolate? Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> that sounded like there was some well, turmoil happening in your brain right there. It's not chocolate? Well, it's in it. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I have to guess. That was my 20th question. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. Ugh, so close. <laughs> oh my god, I never lose, too. I got the last one, too. The last one was adult rated. <laughs> Ugh. We don't have any chocolatey things in the van right now. Or maybe on it. <laughs> on it? Is it a s'more? It's a s'more? Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. It's in a bag. Well, the marshmallows are in a bag. Oh, so like, it's not a marshmallow I know. Bag. The only thing is like, it's like three things because it's a graham cracker, a marshmallow, and a chocolate. So I'm like, I don't know if that works for 20 questions. Speaking of which, we've got these guys. Let's go get some. Yeah. S'mores. What you doing, babe? Seasoning the cast iron. This is what you've been doing all week. I'm trying to pull my weight. Yeah. Just that the coconut oil to season it is too cold so it doesn't melt. Yeah. So I gotta warm it up. 